So there are two gain parameters, A and A sub F. Two things are being asked. A, it is gain without feedback. And then you have A sub F. How will you calculate it? You know A equals minus GMRL. If beta A much, much greater than one, you can use AF one over beta approximately, and beta is negative R2 over R1 plus R2. But if beta A, if not much, much greater than one, A sub F has to be from this equation. A divided by one plus beta A, otherwise it will be incorrect. For the sake of RL, finding RL, you look back into the circuit from the load side. You see RO parallel with R1 plus R2 parallel with RD. That is the RL. It is possible to ignore R1 and R2 in this equation because R1 and R2 they are not the load, they are part of the feedback network. So that is not really the load resistor. But if you don't choose the value of R1 and R2 properly, it might affect on the load side. You can try to find RL using two formulas, RO parallel with big RD, or you can try RO parallel with RD parallel with R1 plus R2. You should see only a little bit of difference. If it's too much difference, then the design of R1 and R2 were not taken properly. So here, given the values of R1 and R2, you have 80 kilo ohm, 20 kilo ohm. RO is 10 kilo ohm, RD is 10 kilo ohm. The transconductance GM is 4000 micro Siemens. Let's calculate the gain with the feedback and gain without the feedback. Last time, one student was missing my call, so he volunteered to try this time. Mr. San An, present, right? Mr. San An? Yes. Okay, please uh, calculate the gain without the feedback, A. The formula for A is minus GM multiplied by RL. The values of R are shown on the screen. I'm going to make it a bit larger so that you can see. Uh, wait a minute. And for A sub F, which is the gain with the feedback, miss number one. You will try. Present? Yes, person. Yes, miss number one, please try gain with the feedback. And once you are done, both of you will look at the values. If I take RL equals only R out parallel RD, 10 kilo ohm parallel with 10 kilo ohm, you will get RL value as 5 kilo ohm. However, if you want to take parallel again, 5 kilo ohm with 80 plus 20, 100 kilo ohm, it will be 5 times 100 divided by 105. I think it's 4.7 something. Four point seven six kilo ohms. So the values were chosen properly. They are pretty much the same. If you use minus GM times RL, it depends. The answer depends on the value of your chosen RL. They should be pretty close. Oh, minus twenty. 
minus 20 if you take RL as 5 kilo ohm. So we can say it is minus GM RL is minus 20. 4000 micro Siemens times 5 kilo ohm, so minus 20. Exactly minus 20. If you ignore the middle feedback resistor part, because that's not the load resistor, that's the feedback. The example in the textbook also ignores the feedback resistor. But if you choose it properly for the voltage dividing feedback resistor, uh, it will be minus 19.04. I can write in the bracket minus 19 about how many percent error? 5% error, just 5% difference. That is okay, acceptable. For gain with feedback. I got minus four. Minus four. So which formula did you use? A divided one plus beta A. A divided one plus beta A. It is always safe to use this formula. Beta is minus R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So minus uh, 20 divided by 100 minus 0. 2 is the beta and then you take minus 20 divided by 1 plus you have to use the minus sign for beta minus 0 0.2 and a is minus 20 do not forget the sign you should get minus 4 let me ask you to try one thing what if you took af equals 1 over beta, the approximation. What is 1 over negative 0 0.2? 5, minus 5. Is this acceptable or not? You compare minus 20 with minus 19. There is only maybe 5% error. That's okay, but gain with feedback between minus four and minus five, it is 25% error. It is not acceptable. So that's why you cannot use the approximation. Because if we see the, if we see the criteria, beta, let me draw beta, multiplied by A, what do you get? A is minus 20, beta is minus 0 0.2. What is, beta a product it is 4 beta a is 4 is greater than 1 but is it much much greater than 1 no if beta a is 1000 or 10000 you can actually approximate 1 over beta but here is not so i can if i say this symbol and then i what to say not much much greater than one both single digit they're on the same scale this is why the approximate formula if you take it it will be wrong so we solve the problem like this we'll look at another example later on shortly after this you will see beta a is much much greater than one you can approximate the feedback gain a sub f as one over beta and there is not much you can compare the two formulas a divided by one plus beta a you will get one value and then you can compare with one over beta you see they're almost the same this one is not so the correct answer for this problem gain without the feedback is about minus 19 minus 20 and gain with the feedback is minus four what if you took minus 9 with the minus 19? Let me see.
if I use minus 19, I took all the R1 and R2 values. I get A sub F equals minus 3.96. So between minus 3.96 and minus 4, there is not much difference. Very tiny. Voltage series feedback can be given using so many different types of circuit components. The first case you saw, there is a JFET and input signal. We can also use voltage series feedback. We can create a voltage series feedback using the op amp. So remember, this one is your feedback network beta. This one is your amplifier gain A before the feedback or without the feedback. When voltage series feedback is using the op amp connection, the beta here is what? R2 over R1 plus R2. And this is already going into the minus pin, so you have a negative feedback later on. However, the output coming out of the op amp, is it plus or minus? What is the output voltage? Is it a plus polarity or a minus polarity from this op amp? Plus, per, plus per polarity. And the reason for that is? It's in a non-inverting configuration. Yes, the input signal is provided where in the plus pin, non-inverting, the feedback, a portion of the voltage is becoming voltage divider here. What is the voltage here? Vf equals V out R2 divided by R1 plus R2. That's Vf is going in the inverting pin. Also, it is not operating in single mode. It is differential mode. So the difference voltage is V plus minus V minus. The differential voltage will be output. What is that common mode voltage? V plus add V minus divided by two. Hopefully that is pretty small, so it will be amplified only slightly. How do we derive the beta equation? Remember what is coming out of the op amp, V out. What is going in is VI. So V out equals A times VI. In VI total will be the difference voltage, this and this. See the VI is given between plus and minus. VI is not VS. The signal is input and then you have a feedback at the inverting. So the differential is VI. VI this is like the mixer network, which we have seen. Let me quickly go back here, plus and minus. Now you are directly connecting. V out equals what? Output equals gain times input. So the output coming of the op amp is A times VI. The gain of the total network, AF is what? Output divided by signal, input signal, V out over VS. Let me find some place to write. A sub F. A sub F, it will equal, we have to, talk about the total feedback network. So in the total feedback network, output final voltage is V out. Your incoming signal is Vs. And then what is Vf? Vs minus Vf equals Vi. We have done seen that Vi is Vs minus Vf. What is Vf equal to? I put the equal sign here. It equals what? Beta times your incoming voltage here is what? V out. V out goes through the beta stage, 
comes out as VF equals, so VF equals beta times V out. We are all writing this in terms of the basic feedback building block, the block diagram. So from this equation, again see, VF equals what? In this feedback, sorry, in this voltage divider, VF equals V out R2 divided by R1 plus R2. It is VF equals V out R2 divided by R1 plus R2. So if you take VF over V out, what is the other term? Let me write this one. V out R2. I hope you can see the voltage divider, how it is doing voltage division. Both are equal to Vf. R1 plus R2. See, Vf equals V out times this thing, also V out times beta means this is V out and this is beta. Put a bracket to isolate the terms. V out times beta is Vf. So therefore, your beta is R2 divided by R1 plus R2. We normally talk about a negative feedback, right? If we go to the previous circuit, you see here you need to provide a negative feedback. So it becomes input becomes Vs minus Vf, the differential. However, now you're using already a differential amplifier. You are operating in differential mode where you are providing Vs on the plus pin and the feedback voltage Vf on the minus pin. It automatically became Vs minus Vf. So did you get this part? Any questions about this one? Mm, I don't have yet. Okay. So well, VA maybe is equal yes. To, so VI is equal to VS minus VF, right? VI equals VS minus VF. The input voltage is the supply voltage, signal voltage, minus the feedback voltage. This is the negative feedback. Here, we're going to go, go back a little bit. Right here. This is VI going in. Where does the VI come from? It comes from the mixer network. What is happening at the mixing network? VS minus VF. We call this as a negative feedback. Sometimes you can have a positive feedback loop as well, but we don't study much about the positive feedback. Different types of feedback will have different effect at the load. Another one is called feed forward network, like the positive feedback. Here's an example problem, also worked out in the also worked out in the book, but you can do here. After Miss Nava one, I will move on to the next person on list, Mr. Natapop. I think he's not here. Yes, Ajahn, I'm here. Natapop. Natapop, are you also in my lab class? Yes, yes, yes. So yesterday you did not come due to your problem? Yeah, I have problem. But you are okay? to attend yeah, online class. Right now. <laughs> you okay. don't feel sick, right? Yeah. Were you attending online class yesterday? Um, no. Attending class yesterday, no, no, no. You are going to hospital? Yep. Okay. So, Mr. Natapop, for you, calculate the voltage gain of this circuit. Voltage gain means 
uh, already given the gain without feedback is 100,000. So that's the open loop gain. Okay. Two resistors are given. I think this is, oh no, this is 200 ohm, okay. 1.8 kilo ohm and 200 ohm. R1 is 1.8K, R2 is 200 ohm. Should it be 2 kilo ohm or what? It looks kind of strange. We can try to do this with 200 ohm. And what you are asked to do is calculate this thing. A sub F equals what? The safest thing to do is always like this. A divided by, so I'm also giving the formula. 1 plus beta A. A is given beta, you have to calculate the way we have shown before. Beta is R2 divided by R1 plus R2. 200 ohm divided by 2000 ohm. Okay, Ajahn. Um, so calculate AF, please. How much is it? Um, uh, one second. Um, I got um, 9.9. 9. 9.9? Yes, um, 100,000 divided by 1 plus. I think you're going to get something like this, 9.99 .99, or so many nines. Yep. So this is his answer. Everyone look at this. This is his answer. Is correct? Let's see what is the product of beta A. Beta times A. Beta is how much? Is it 0 0.1? 200 divided by 1000. R2 divided by R1 plus R2. 200 divided by 2000. So it's 0 0.1 multiplied by 100,000. What is beta A? 10,000? Beta A is 10,000. equals 10,000, 10, 10K. I'm going to write 10K. I don't want to write so many zero here. It gives me trouble when I try to draw zero. Beta A is 10,000. 10,000 compared with one, you see how many times more, like five digits more, much, much greater than one. If you satisfy this condition, AF, you can approximate to 1 over beta. Now, what is 1 over beta in this? In this problem, what is 1 over beta? Ten. What is the value of beta? 10. 0 0.1. So beta is 0 0.1. The inverse of 0 0.1 is 10. Now, can you see what is the difference between 9.99 and 10? Not much difference. If you calculate the percentage error, I get 1% error, exactly 1% error. For the previous case where beta A was not much, much greater than one, if you accidentally or wrongfully took the formula A equals one over beta. Perhaps some students, they want to do shortcut, they want to save some time, you would get 1 over 0 0.25, but the actual is minus 4. Minus 4 is the actual answer, or minus 3.96. Using your shortcut, you get 5. It is 25% error. Totally not okay to do that. Here you have a positive value of A sub F. which is correct because the op amp is getting non-inverting input.
So that's the case where you can approximate the feedback gain equals one over beta. But if you don't satisfy that condition, it's wrong. If anyone had missed this information in my class in the previous, here is a mistake on the slide. It says when A much, much greater than one, this is not only A, this is beta times A much, much greater than one. So this is a correction you have to make on slide number five. We move on to the next one. Okay, we talked about this in our op M class, frequency, distortion, and feedback. If you have in a feedback network, only resistors, for example, this one, R1 and R2, part of your feedback network, we call it a purely resistive feedback circuit or purely resistive network. If you change the frequency of the input signal, the frequency variation will have little or no effect on the gain. Why is that? How does a resistor behave when you put a sinusoidal signal? If you have a steady state AC circuit, we have a lab, I teach a lab steady state AC circuit analysis. We use a function generator with the AC input, and then we have a circuit only R, another circuit RL, another RC, RLC, etc. So resistor has no reactance. The impedance of a resistor Z is only R. If you have a capacitor, capacitor has capacitive reactance X sub C, 1 over 2 pi F C. When you change the frequency, the ohm value of its reactance will change. So with frequency variation, it will change your amplifier gain if you have capacitive elements. If you have inductor, what is the inductive reactance X sub L? 2 pi F times L. Now you can see when you change frequency, the inductive reactance, which we calculate in ohms, it will also change. So it will ultimately impact your gain. So if you have resistive feedback, in many cases, it can totally get rid of all frequency variation effect on the gain. However, when you switch to frequency dependent components, which I just mentioned, capacitor and inductor, if you include that type of component in your feedback network, the frequency response of the amplifier will also get affected by the presence of those elements. Then noise and nonlinear distortion. We mentioned this while we were talking in the previous class, why feedback is good. Also in the op amp class, if you remember, the op amp can operate in open loop and closed loop. When you close the loop by connecting the output with the input, you create a feedback path. The open loop gain may be 20,000 or 100,000. The closed loop gain is only a few digits. But doing the feedback, when you have a feedback network, it reduces the noise by cancellation, which in the case of op amp, if you provide the feedback on the inverting pin, signal is coming on the positive pin. In the common mode, the noise will be canceled totally. You're using BJT or JPET. The phase of the feedback signal is often opposite the phase of the input signal. This is the case. If you have a distorted signal, a signal which has a shape which is not exactly same as the input signal, which I showed you in the previous class as well. You have a sine wave input, the output is kind of funny. We call it the distortion. You can have harmonic distortion crossover, but also when you try to go in the higher frequency range, you can have some distortion effects. The output of your amplifier can become nonlinear. 
this type of nonlinear distortion is also reduced because of the feedback, because you reduce the gain. Imagine working with a 100,000 gain versus maybe 10 or 20 gain. If you increase the gain a lot, you have a chance for your signal to get distorted because it is multiplied by so much. Noise can even be amplified. Then you have the noise adding to the original signal. Your main waveform will no longer keep the shape. It will get distorted. When you put the feedback path, the negative feedback, your amplifier, be it an op amp or JPET or BJT, it is operating in the middle area, mid range of your bandwidth, and it does not go to the high extreme or low extreme. Therefore, you don't have a chance of nonlinear distortion too much. You might have some, but it is greatly reduced. Here is a graph or a diagram of bandwidth versus feedback. It's a gain versus frequency. The AO, A sub O is open loop gain. You see it is at the maximum gain. Okay. But if you are at the maximum gain, you look at the corresponding bandwidth, B. This B is from F1 until F2, frequency 1 until frequency 2. It's a narrow, I wouldn't say too much narrow, but compared to the lower gain bandwidth, it is a small bandwidth. Now you provide some feedback. When you provide some feedback, the original one is narrow, original one is right here. You provide a little bit of feedback, so your Total gain is now 0 0.707 times the full gain, maybe 70%. You have reduced bandwidth. You can actually make the feedback in such a way that you can get a further larger bandwidth. With the feedback, you can get very wide bandwidth. So the amplifier operate, can operate at a larger available frequency range, the gain will be much smaller. The gain is now decreased. But it makes the network stable. It provides linear output at higher frequencies. It provides non-distorted waveform. That's what you want. You don't want so much gain. Here again, the slide is topping with gain stability with feedback. When you use the feedback, you have seen most of the gain calculations. They are mostly primarily based on external resistive elements in the feedback circuit. So in the gain calculation, internal variation of beta and GM, they are mostly not present in the final gain calculation. The gain becomes more stable. Here is a consideration for frequency. If you go to too much high frequency, the feedback signal might become out of phase with the input. Let's say you are operating in a normal medium to low frequency or even medium high. You have a feedback signal and you have an input signal, if they are the same phase, you don't have to worry. But if you have out of phase, for example, in the same phase, let me show you the differential amplifier. Sorry. Op amp, voltage series feedback with the op amp. This one, same phase. This one is the same phase. You are taking Vs minus Vf when they are the same phase. Now, what happens? What happens 
at the high frequency, the feedback signal may be out of phase. Out of phase, usually the opposite, 180 degree out of phase, means the feedback signal is a minus sign. Again, in the case of op M, what is happening? V plus subtract with V minus. So this is plus minus with the minus sign. You actually get double. The output will be doubled. It will become unstable. Feedback becomes positive because you are taking minus of a minus. The amplifier becomes unstable and it can begin to oscillate. The oscillation may be out of control. This topic, topic 14 uh, for slide 14, 15 and 16, it is not in the scope of this class, but that's why I don't teach it. You can skip it. But this is, I'll tell you quickly what it is. It's a plot involving imaginary axis and real axis. So real axis is the X axis. You have a real number. Imaginary axis, you have a number I, which is root over square root of minus one. We call it the Nyquist plot combination of two body plots. If you study which top, which subject, I can remember. I think when I studied bachelor's, it was part of the course called digital signal processing or electromagnetism even. This kind of plot shows quickly if, it's an, if an amplifier is stable for all frequencies or not. Nyquist frequency means uh, it is a frequency, for example, if you want to, if you have an incoming frequency at 100 hertz, you have to sample the signal at at least two times the incoming frequency. The sampling frequency is 200 hertz. The Nyquist frequency is sampling frequency divided by two. So your incoming signal should not in, should not exceed the Nyquist frequency. If it exceeds, when you sample, you will sample wrong. This one you don't have to study for this course. I don't ask it. I was just explaining from my own another course. So if this is a diagram, Nyquist plot, there's a point minus one. If the curve encircles the minus one point, it is unstable. If the curve does not encircle the minus one point, then it is stable. This one you can also skip phase and frequency consideration. So slide um, 14, 15, and 16, I will not ask question from here. Now we were talking about oscillator operations or oscillations. The feedback signal, you have a negative feedback network, but this feedback signal must be positive. AF equals V out over VS. And we know the equation A divided by one plus beta A. If the feedback signal is not positive, what is going to happen? Or the feedback loop gain, the total loop gain, is less than one, you can have some trouble. What are the troubles? Oscillation can dampen out. If your feedback signal is not positive, oscillation will dampen out means, let me try to draw. You will have this kind of signal. And then as you see, it is dampening out means the signal is dying. Finally, it will be dead. This is the meaning of dampening out. When the overall loop gain is less than one or the feedback signal is not positive, this is what is going to happen. What happens if the overall gain is greater than one? This is what is going to happen. Oscillation is increasing. 
eventually the oscillator will reach a saturation. The signal will not be completely sinusoidal. The overall loop gain, if you want the output to remain stable, the overall loop gain must remain at one. Unity gain is what we call it. So we studied the basic of feedback. The chapter is about feedback and oscillators. In the next round, we will look at some oscillator networks. Phase shift, wind bridge, tuned oscillator, uh, crystal and unijunction oscillator. The last two subtopics are mostly descriptional, but we have problem to solve from the first three types. Before that, before I move on, do you have any questions? No questions. No questions. Slide 19. This is again a phase shift oscillator. This is not an actual circuit. This is the idea of a phase shift oscillator. You have an amplifier. You see here is the input. And then you have an output. The output is fed back to an RC network, network of resistors and capacitors. This thing encircled, not encircled, enclosed in the rectangle, blue rectangle is your feedback network. Some part of your output voltage is lost through the feedback network. Therefore, the amplifier must provide enough gain in order to compensate for the loss. Overall gain must be unity, means beta A. This is A, so you have, let me try to draw A. The amplifier gain is A. The feedback network gain or multiplication factor is B. So when you pass the signal through one loop, you are having beta A. The overall gain beta A has to be unity gain in order for the oscillation to remain stable as we discussed two slides before. The RC network will provide the necessary phase shift for the positive feedback. If I tell you the phase shift of this feedback network is 180 degrees. And you have three RC stages. Here's one RC, in the middle is another stage, and the third one is another stage, so there are three stages. The phase shift provided has to be 180 degree phase shift. So how much phase shift for each stage of RC? What will be your answer? The overall feedback shift is 180 degrees. So what is phase shift in degree for each of the RC stage? 60 degrees. So that is the normal tendency to answer. You take 180 divided by the number of stages, which is three. What happens in reality is a bit different. It is not 60 degrees. Each section may not be 60 degrees, not necessarily. They might be exactly 60 degrees sometimes, Sometimes they're not exactly 60 degree for each of them, but overall they will always give you 180 degree. That is the important one. The overall phase shift, as long as you achieve 180 degree phase shift out of the entire feedback network, then you are good. What is happening inside, whether or not they're exactly equal or not, you don't worry, you, you don't care about them. You just care about the overall phase shift. Okay, uh, if I get disconnected due to thunderstorm, if the Wi-Fi gets disconnected, you please stay on the line. I will reconnect using a hotspot. But I think for now we are good. What is the frequency of this oscillator? 
is this. It is given on your formula sheet for a phase shift oscillator, F equals 1 over 2 pi RC times square root of 6. There is one criteria here. If you want beta A to be greater than 1, what happens if beta A is not greater than 1? The overall gain, if it's less than 1, oscillation dies down. If it's greater than 1, eventually it will saturate it will not it will not become it will not become more than this so it will still stay in the same limit so if beta a is greater than 1 what is the value of a that you need to achieve in the phase shift oscillator there is a certain criteria beta equals 1 divided by 29 in this phase shift oscillator. This value is taken using classical network analysis. So beta is 1 over 29. If beta A has to be greater than 1, then A has to be greater than 29. So the gain of amplifier stage, this one, for the phase shift oscillator, it must be above 29. For beta A, the whole loop network to stay above one, the oscillation will swing upwards, but it will saturate. If you have totally one, altogether you have one, you have a completely stable one, it doesn't go up or down. If you have less than one for beta A, your oscillation will die. The amplitude will be getting smaller and smaller, and one time you will reach a point where you don't have any more oscillation. So what I showed you on slide number 19 is just the idea. You have RC, 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 and you have an amplifier. Generic symbol and generic building block. If you want to see this in real life, this is one example of a real case for a phase shift oscillation. You see, you have an amplifier. It's an amplifier. This is a JPET. It's a JPET. Previous, where you see a triangle, it looks like an op amp, but if you want to draw a full circuit, you have to put the plus and minus, draw every symbol properly. So that one is a generic symbol of amplifier. This one is actually JPET. And then, where do you take the output? This is called gate. This is called source. And this one is called drain. VDS, the voltage from drain to source, is your output voltage. Current ID equals IS is your output current. So this is where the output is taken. Output voltage. Now see what is happening. It is entered into a feedback network. So I will just draw something around this part. This is your three-stage feedback network. What's the frequency of the oscillation that you will go, that you will get out of this JPET phase shift oscillator? It's the same formula, 1 over 2 pi RC times square root of 6. Again, the amplifier gain must be enough to compensate for losses. Overall gain must be unity. RC network will provide the phase shift. So you know what happens. We need a positive feedback in order for the oscillation to go on. You might be getting confused now because I talked about negative feedback in the beginning of the class. Now I am talking about the positive feedback. Why is that? Why is that? Quickly explain to you before you get further confused. This is a negative feedback, positive going into negative. You are not having oscillation. This is not an oscillator. You just want a steady output signal, which is reduced in noise, which is reduced in distortion, we are using negative feedback. This is negative, negative. Why do we want to have a positive feedback? 
because we have to maintain oscillation. Here it says, uh, I'm a bit lost here. If the feedback signal is not positive, what is going to happen? You will not have oscillation. Oscillation will die just like this. So for the oscillator, the feedback has to be positive. That's why now we are talking about positive, the need for a positive feedback. OK, do you remember what is the relationship between JPET input and output signal? How many degrees phase shift between input and output for the JPET? Hundred eighty means if you put plus input, let me put plus on the left hand side, your output will be inverted, so it is minus. Now what happens? You take the minus output, you put this on the network which has another hundred eighty phase shift. So you phase shifted by hundred eighty here, you phase shifted by another hundred eighty. Finally, what is coming inside? minus and minus, you have finally a positive feedback. So the oscillation can go on. Same with the BJT. If you take plus, the output is 180 degree phase shifted. So, you, but you cannot take a negative and put it back because the there will be no oscillation. So that's why you needed a phase shift network using resistor and capacitor which gives you 180 again, minus flip by another 180. Overall, you have a positive feedback. And the oscillation is happening according to this frequency. The output oscillating waveform will show the frequency value 1 over 2 pi RC times square root of 6. There's a phase shift oscillator using the JPEG. This is a practical version, clearly showing amplifier and feedback networks. You can see on the right hand side of the JPET symbol, GM and RD. These are important parameters when you try to solve some problem. Why? If you take the gain, the magnitude of the gain, A, gain without feedback, what is it? Normally, it's minus GM RL with the load resistor. So you can write A equals GM RL. If you want the absolute value of the gain, I can say GM and then RL. That's why you need to know the GM, the transconductance of this model. Other one, RL. When we did the voltage series feedback, we know RL. If you have nothing else connected, it is big RD parallel with small RD. Small RD is always given in the JPET AC analysis equation. If you don't want to ignore the small RD, you can say big RL equals RD parallel small RD, which means RD multiplied by small RD divided by RD plus small RD. Also, as a very good approximation, you should know that this FET input impedance is infinity. When we did the AC analysis of FET, you have seen between gate and source, there is no connection. It is open. You only have BGS, but you don't have input current because the input impedance of FET is so high, we always take IG approximately zero, so input impedance is kind of infinity. So this is one example of a circuit. Phase shift oscillation using an op amp. It is drawn a bit differently, but they are basically the same thing. It is not different from this one. It is not different from this one. This one is drawn one on top of the other, but actually the connection is the same. You have an op amp. It's an inverting op amp, as I can see. The input is inverted. 
the output will be inverted. And then you take another 180 degree phase shift and then you come up with the original input. The original input is plus. It is a plus voltage, but you are connecting with the inverting pin. That's why you are getting a negative inverted output on the output side. Then it goes inside this stage, which will which will provide you another 180 phase shift. Let me cover this area. This gives you another 180. So minus times minus, you will have coming out of this is plus. So the oscillation goes on. What is the frequency of the oscillation? Same formula. 1 over 2 pi square root of 6 times RC. RC is not, C obviously is the value of capacitor in the phase shift network. Never try to take R value from the input resistor or the feedback resistor RF. The value of the resistor and capacitor in this formula must come from the members of the feedback network, the phase shift network. This is the phase shift network. RC comes from here. Any questions? Uh, no. Okay, and this circuit shows you give the two levels of DC. One is plus, one is minus. Here is an example we can try. It is desired to design this phase shift oscillator using the FET. For FET, they are providing the value of transconductance GM 5000 micro Siemens, small RD 40 kilo ohm. I was telling you before, these two things are important and necessary to find something else. Feedback circuit value for R is 10 kilo ohm. This one is 10K. You have to select the value of capacitor. You have to design or select the value of capacitor. Oscillator operation must happen at 1 kilohertz. Also, design the value of RD. It's a design problem, it seems to be. In order for A to be greater than 29 to ensure oscillator action, so A is here. A is GMRL. If you take the absolute value, the magnitude, I told you A is GMRL. It has to be greater than 29. First, we have to find the value of C. Can we find the value of C from this equation? F equals 1 over 2 pi RC times root square root of 6. So the square root is on 6, not on RC. What is C then? C equals 1 over 2 pi square root of 6 times RF. F is already given 1 kilohertz. Let's calculate everyone the value of the capacitance. We are doing capacitor calculation, all of us together. I have calculated the value of capacitor myself, and I'm waiting for you to calculate as well. I just use my calculator. Has anyone 
determine the value of C. When you're ready, please let me know. Six point five. Okay. Uh, in calculator, six point four nine seven times ten power negative nine. So we can say C is six point five nano para. I'll put it somewhere. Maybe right here. Six point point five nano is small n. Small n. Yeah. It's very troublesome drawing like this. Small n parad is capital F. So we found C. R is given 10k. The other member will be 6.5 nanofarad. A has to be greater than 29. We know A equals the absolute value of A. So the absolute value of A has to be greater than 29. GM for JPEG, it is GM RL. I forgot the M. GM times RL. Normally it's minus GM RL, but we are taking the absolute value of gain. We can pick a number. As long as it's greater than 29, the oscillation will go on. What number should we pick? Like a nice number? 30, 35, 40 is up to us. Maybe don't take too much close to 29 for the case of being on the safe side. Can we take 40? Because 40 evenly divisible by 5,000. 40 divided by 5,000 micro, how much you will get? Let's say A, we take 40. That's our chosen value. If A equals 40, what is the value of RL? The load resistor. Like overall load of the output side. 40 divided by 5,000, A is 40, this is 5,000 micro siemens. So what is RL then? Can you calculate RL? What is the value of RL? How many in ohm or kilo ohm? Uh, 8K ohm. 8K ohm. I cannot draw there, but I I take 40 divided by 5,000 micro siemens, I get 8 kilo ohm. So RL is 8 kilo ohm. But what is RL in terms of big RD and small RD? There's a reason why the small RD is given for this JPEG. Because RL equals, let me write here, RD parallel with small RD means RD times small RD, two parallel resistors. You can use the shortcut formula. Huh. Quite annoying. Okay, RD times small RD divided by you add these two. RD, add small RD. That's the parallel resistor equation, two parallel resistors. 
small d. This equals 8 kilo ohm. You know right, the teacher? value? Yes? Is that uh, right? Ah, ah. Okay. I thought it RD be. times small rd divided by rd plus small rd. We don't have p here. Quite a bit of mess. You know RL we calculated at 8 kilo ohm because we took absolute value of A to be 40. We know small rd 40 kilo ohm. So this parallel resistor equals 8 kilo ohm and small rd is 40. Now we have to do some equation like some mathematical calculation in order to find the value of big rd. So let's find that. Rd times small rd divided by rd plus small rd equals 8000. And instead of small rd, you can write 40,000. I'm calculating now with a piece of paper and pen. So 40,000 RD divided by 40,000 plus big RD equals 8,000. Get 32,000 RD equals 32 and then seven zeros. My value of I, RD, I get 10 kilo ohm. Let's see how much you get. So RD, big RD is something that we are trying to find out. Has anyone figured out RD? Please work. Uh, all at the same time or together and tell me what value of RD have you calculated? We don't get different values. We all should get the same value. Is anyone ready to answer? Uh, no, not yet ready. 
couldn't find the answer yet. Okay, calculate, keep calculating. small rd divided by rd plus small rd that equals to rl or uh the parallel okay rd times small rd divided by rd plus small rd equals rl which we have set as eight kilo ohm because we took a the absolute value of amplified gain to be 40 GM is given as 5,000 micro siemens. So if you take 40 divided by 5,000 micro siemens, you're going to get 8,000, 8 kilo ohm. Yes, RD times RD divided by RD plus small RD must equal 8,000. I got 10K ohm. Yes, it is 10K actually. If you take a value of 40 for A, so you get a nice calculation parameter, you get 10K. You can try with other value of A. You can try 30, 35, 50, as long as, as long it's over 29. But we'll use common sense. We're not going to take anything that is too much ridiculous because it will saturate the oscillation quite fast. Anyone else is having trouble calculating this? I think I have because I think I used the wrong one. <laughs> okay. How about the other ones? Did you get to do it? Uh, you don't have to take. Possible. Yes. Can you show how to how you calculate to get 10k? Okay. Let's go to the whiteboard. I think that's the better place. Let me prepare the whiteboard, not the whiteboard. Should I go to the whiteboard or should I go to the class notebook? Uh, notebook would be better for me now. Whiteboard is quite problematic. I'm preparing a class notebook now. And I'll type in there, but let me prepare the notebook first. Is there a name of this example? Example 14.7. Okay. I'll put a name. Example 14.7 RD calculation. Increase the screen and then switch the screen. Let's switch the screen. I have 20 fonts, so I can type here. No, I should use large font. I took A, which is the magnitude of A equals GM times RL. And times RL. We, can you see my typing? Yes, this yes, we can see. Game is given as 5000 micro Siemens. Therefore, RL will be A over GM, which is 40 divided by 5000 micro is 10 power 6, negative 6, 10 power negative 6. This is the value I get, 8,000 ohm. This is the load resistor, 8,000. Also, for the JFET, RL 
equals Rd times small Rd. This is parallel resistor, okay? Divided by it's simple mathematics. Means your equation is like this. Rd and then let me let me start drawing now. The equation is like this. Rd times what is the value of small Rd? 40k. Uh, 40k. Yes. I'll just write 40k instead of writing all those zeros. 40k Rd divided by Rd plus small rd is 40k, so plus 40k. This is all in ohms equals 8000 or 8k. All you have to do is do the cross multiplication. So you have on the left hand side, 40k rd or 40,000 rd equals 8k rd right cross multiplying plus what 40,000 uh, multiplied by 8,000 if you take 40,000 multiplied by 8,000 you will get 32 and okay. seven zeros. 32 followed by seven zeros. 32 followed by seven zero. Can you write as 320K? I just put seven zeros here. Six, seven. So what is RD then? 40 minus 8K. 40K minus 8K is 32K, right? This is 32,000 RD. 32K of RD. Equals that thing. Three, two, and then kilo mega, three twenty mega K, no, three twenty mega, thirty two kilo RD is this thing. So, what is RD? You divide this thing, three thirty two followed by the ten set, ten zero, seven zeros. Okay, you have this equation already. What is Rd? You get 10,000. Rd, you should get 10,000. Do you get 10,000? If you, here is 32k, 32k, and then you have four, one and then four zeros, we have 10,000. Now, can you see how you get 10,000 for RD? Uh, yes, I can oh, see now. It's hard to do mentally. You need pen, paper, or you need a tab where you can calculate on the screen. RD is 10K ohm, 10,000 ohm. So for the chosen value of A, we got C, uh, RD is 10K. C, we already calculated from the given frequency and phase shift resistor, it was 6.5 nanobar. Gain we had to pick.
So phase shift oscillator is done. Next one is wind bridge. We can study in the next class, I mean next week. But to conclude about the phase shift oscillator, a phase shift oscillator is a linear electronic oscillator which will produce a sine wave output. Remember this, linear electronic oscillator producing a sine wave output. It consists of an inverting amplifier element, which can be a transistor or an op amp. With the output is fed back to the input through a phase shift network. In the phase shift network, you will have R and C, resistor and capacitor connected like in a ladder diagram. If you remember, digital to analog conversion DAC circuit, there's a ladder network diagram for DAC. So this type of connection where R and C is connected as if they look like the different rungs of a ladder or portion of a ladder, this is called a ladder network. What are the uses of the phase shift oscillator? Low frequency generation is one of the uses, also in audio frequency generation applications. I have added a homework for you. The due date, I think, is next Monday midnight. Sorry, not Monday, Tuesday, before midnight should be your due date. That homework is homework number four. We have a total of five homeworks for this course, for this semester. Let me call you now for the attendance check, Mr. Balan. Uh, present, sir. Hira Wood? Yes. Napatra? Yes. Bakong? Yes. Rajay? Is Rajay present? Johnny Khan? Yes, Ka Ajahn. Michelle? Not present. Phil? Uh, yes, sir. City Kong? Yes. We salute. Yes, sir. Michelle? Yes, teacher. Say, say, hang. Yes, I don't. Patong Pong. Yeah, hang. Kong Su. Yes, I don't. Martin. Kola Witt. Yes. Pichayu. Present, hang. Pichayu is present. And then the next one is Jimma. Yes, sir. Sonyuan? Yes. Present. Satawat? Yes. Yapeng? Yes. Seni? Yes, present. Teripo? Present. V2? Present. San An, present. What are it? Yes. Number one. Present. Natapop is present. Warapat. Present. 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 Nataya. Present. Tichaya Pong. Yes, sir. Pong Chan. Yes, I'm here, sir. Piradon. Yes, I'm here. It's an Apong. Yes, teacher. Aditya, Aditya. Yes. Yes. Asin. Yes. Sukarna. Yes. Irin. Yes, teacher. Min Luin Wu. See you next week. Ah, uh, John, I, Rajay, I just, I just prepared for office, John. Sorry. What happened, Rajay? Ah. Uh, I just prepared for office for my payment agent. That's why I didn't hear my name when you call my attendance. Okay. Sorry, John. No problem. See you next week. Is Michelle here? Michelle? I think Thank she's you, not sir. here.
welcome.